we are going to uh, add a warmer or a heater to our Enduro Power lithium battery. So, as people know, lithium batteries will not charge if they're below freezing, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Sometimes there are trips it will take or just when it's in storage. So what I'm doing is I got some uh, tank heater pads and actually talked to Enduro and they recommended this brand to use. So these will stick on and they will allow us to come to actually take power from the battery itself to keep itself warm. So right now I am going to be sticking these on because it was impossible to do in the RV lockbox because it was too small. So I'm going to do that and then we'll bring it back over. We'll drop it back in and we'll get it wired up. So let me hit this. Do I want to do probably this way for my wiring? These are what go on the tanks, the water tanks underneath. I'm gonna need to cut that. like when a woman is going through her purse looking for things. Keep it the same. It's the same. So if you look at the inside of this, you'll see there's a heating element. And that's just wires that are running through then they're gonna keep it warm. I did talk to Enduro and they did recommend this brand, which is Fake On, I think it's, it is. It's just on Amazon. They are just standard tank heaters. It's not perfectly straight, but it's fine. They'll do the job. Not building a church, man. All right, so one of the things I wanna do before I go crazy putting it all back in is I do wanna test it. first so i did hook up i am hooking up a switch to it so the idea behind the switch is that we're not going to need these on all the time they do have a built-in thermostat so what happens is when it gets below 45 degrees fahrenheit they'll they'll come on by themselves um, once they have power to them and then once they hit 65 they shut off so the idea is that because we're going to power it off the battery itself it needs a switch. Like when you have, when they use this tank heaters, you have a switch inside the RV, you throw it on, it says, okay, go ahead, turn them on. This is gonna be the same thing. We're gonna have a switch that's gonna be inside the battery box. When I know it's gonna be cold, we'll come, we'll just turn it on and it will turn the pads on and then they'll regulate themselves. And then once it starts getting warmer again, we'll shut them off. So my switch, let me see where my switch is gonna go. Uh, switch is gonna go nowhere with this because I don't wanna have to screw through there to put a switch. So I'll just drop it down in there for now. It'll be fine. So right now, I'm going to do the wiring out here instead of waiting and doing it inside the battery case. So I'll have more room, make my life a little easier. So right now I'm connecting the white, which is the negatives, to my negative of my switch which will hook to the battery directly, to the battery negative. Heat gun. Ooh, look at you. You know what, the Ryobis are okay. For the everyday homeowner DIY, they're great. They're very versatile. They're inexpensive. They do the job and I get a whole bunch of them. That is not sponsored, by the Hashtag way. Hashtag sponsor us Ryobi. <laughs> so always super important, always have a fuse. Always, always, always have an inline fuse. 
because you don't want to blow up your battery. Something ever shorts out or something ever happens, you want to have a fuse in line so that it does not blow up your battery. It'll blow the fuse first. And you also want to make sure your fuse is not too large for what you're working on. This is a 10 amp fuse that's in here because these only draw a total of 10 amps combined. And it's actually the fuse that they gave me when I bought the heaters. And the heaters did come as a pack. So it was two of them together because they're made for a, uh, for a larger tank. You can get them separate, but I got two because I wanted to totally wrap the battery. Because you want to surround the battery with heat because it's, out, it's staying outside. And a lot of people do put the lithiums on the inside and I thought about it, but it's a lot of work to move everything and I just didn't want to do it. He's got to save energy for when he puts in our new stairs instead. Yeah, we got to get to that. Oh. And yes, I still have to do the curtains. I am not a trained professional. So as we're going through this, this is the way that I researched it. This is the way that I decided I was gonna do it. This doesn't work for everybody. I've seen a lot of other people do it different ways. This is just what we're trying. And I did do a bunch of research on it, did contact the battery manufacturer. They do sell heated batteries that you can buy. I think um, Battleborn, but it makes it so that you don't have to do this, but they are significantly expensive. So have uh, battery blankets and heaters that you can just plug into a 110 outlet. We really don't have one here when, we're in when it's in storage and it doesn't help you when you're boondocking. So the idea of this is use the battery to keep itself warm. We do have solar. We have no problem with the, every, every time we have it in storage, we come back, it's at hundred percent. We don't have to worry about it discharging. This will allow it to use a little bit of that battery power and be able to keep it warm so it'll stay charged in the winter. Um, I started off, hooked up my grounds together. So I have my two grounds for my heating pads and I have my ground for my switch or hooked to my negative. And then now what I'm doing is my positive is coming off the battery, fused, goes to my switch. From my switch coming out, and it's gonna be connecting to my, to my pads. So now this will make sure that when I turn it on, I'll have power to the pads. It's also lighted, so I'll be able to see when it's on or off very easily. And we are going to test it before we put it back in to make sure everything works okay. So you can see power is off, power is on, it's lighted. So we can see that they should be heating up now. She get warm? It is starting to get warm already. It's not dramatic. It's enough to keep it warm. The idea is to keep it above 32 degrees. That's all it needs to do. Keep it above freezing so that it will, it will keep charging. which is gonna sit there. I was hoping to put it in a little mount, but there's no room. So it is what it is. You can see this box is very tight. Um, they do make a taller one. It is very, I wasn't sure if it was gonna make it. I could probably slide it forward more, but people ask all the time, you know, do I need to move my lithium batteries inside? I spent a thousand dollars on a battery. And these RV lock boxes, they are spectacular. They are. They're not waterproof by any means, but they do, um, you can, I don't know if we filmed this, putting this on, but there's a cover that slides on. The only downside is the rivets that sometimes will hit. That's why we have a protective cap 
on our positive, you can shoot that. Little cap on the positive to make sure that it doesn't accidentally ground out. And your cover just slides on. And you have your lock. And if you come back on this side, lock her up. I don't know, guys. He's pretty darn good at this stuff. I'm very lucky. How do you know what you know, baby? Uh, well, my family, I come from a family of tinkerers. Grandfather was a, was a, uh, worked in the jewelry industry and he was a tool maker. My father was a carpenter. And, uh, yeah, you get to know things. While Lou's clanging around and buttoning things up with a propane tank, we will end this video like we like to end all our videos. Keep wandering. Yeah, what she said. <laughs> Keep wandering. Bye.